Vancouver-based ag tech firm has t- Semios has turned into what they call in venture capital land a unicorn. It has been valued above a billion dollars. Now the company says crop growers can save water and reduce harmful chemical use by exploiting its proprietary technology to manage irrigation and tackle crop disease, pests and frost. We are joined for today's clean tech segment by Michael Gilbert, founder and CEO of Semios. Michael, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Tell us how your what is your technology? What do you, what are you bringing to this? Yeah, so our product is a is precision ag as a service. So we use a combination of the Internet of Things, software, and biologicals to help farmers make better decisions using data driven and analytics. One of your key tools here is a multitude of sensor, sensors in the ground. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, when you're dealing with a, a biological system like a farm, knowing more means you can better understand your risks. So we measure everything from what is the microclimate, how many insects are in the field, what kind of disease risk is there. And when you understand these things at a more granular level, you're better prepared to forecast and do logistical planning around managing your farm. So this is partly about precision agriculture. So if I'm a grower, what will I be getting here? I'll be getting a whole bunch of sensors that I I will put into my field or my orchard? Well, one of the things that we learned early on is we took all that risk around the technology away from the grower. So when you sign up, you sign up for a service. So they take no risks on the hardware or the networking. We come up, we install the network and and the sensors and the control systems in place. And then the grower pays a fee per acre per year for that service, oh. taking all that risk away. That's interesting. So the cultivator has no upfront capital cost then? Yeah, we find that most of our customers are more willing to pay for the science and the improved uh, decision making as opposed to investing in technology which they can't fix or control. That's interesting. They have enough stuff to fix on their farm anyway. I, I don't know how farmers do it. They've got all that machinery they got to work with. Trust me, they have their hands full without dealing with like, what is the password or how is this Wi-Fi working? <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest problem you're trying to fix here? Well, as, as many of you have probably heard, um, you know, our customers are, they're in a dire straits right now. There is rising input costs, mm-hmm. less water, less labor. And because we work so closely with our customers, we feel that pain. And so we're trying to help them manage um, their decision-making process to do to grow more with less, whether it's less chemicals, less water, less labor, less fuel, these all help our customers actually improve their margins and stay afloat. I mean, for one thing, oh, so we're looking at some of the stuff you do, millions of sensors. Do you already have the millions of sensors in fields uh, already? Yeah, right now we have about, we manage around 120 million acres around the world. 120, sorry, how many, sorry? 120 million acres. Oh, okay, sorry, go on, yep. Yeah, and about two uh, to three million right now sensors in the ground and control systems on our network that control what's happening in the field. Your customers include uh, vineyards, uh, almond growers. Is there a particular type of crop that this is especially suitable for? Yeah, when we first launched, we were focused mainly on the high value permanent crops. So think anything that grows on trees or vines, whether they be apples, cherries, almonds, or pistachios. And then we started expanding. We started doing more in, in, in row crops, and, uh, and now we've expanded beyond that, certainly across Canada, Australia, and now uh, also in Europe. So tell me, I mean, how would a sensor where I'm running an apple orchard, apples are notorious for needing a lot of spray. How would a sensor help me cut back on the amount of pesticide I use? Yeah, it's really about being able to forecast when is that risk going to show up? You know, when you're managing such a complex thing as a biological large orchard, there's lots going on. There are edge effects, there's wind effects, and it's not the same across the field. And so if you don't have data, then you're going to spray as much as you can Mm -hmm. to manage risk overall. But when you have more detailed information, we can provide that insight to help the grower understand, okay, the risk is building. You may have to spray in the next week or so. And now because you have that time, you can also choose between using a biological 
or maybe a more classical pesticide. But now you have more options when you have more data. I guess it's more straightforward with detecting gr uh, drought. Um, for example, in an orchard, if there's a dry patch, I presume that'll tell, y your system will notify the owner. Yeah, we watch for both water in the ground, so how deep is the water, how deep do those roots have to go to get water, and also understanding how much humidity is in the air, what water is actually mm -hmm. present on the leaves, on the branches, and how much is the tree actually needing at this point in time. Because trees, trees can handle a lot of different stress levels in terms of water management, and so we track that carefully to make sure we can use the least amount of water and still get the crop we need. So you were founded in 2010. Tell us who came up with this technology. Is there a single person or source? Yeah, well, I founded the company around a premise that we could use the Internet of Things and networks to help deliver a, a new type of biological called a pheromone, which allowed us to displace more classical pesticides. And then the business grew from there. As we built more networks and more software, more apps, we started seeing that our customers could do so much more with the data we had, and we expanded into things like frost management, irrigation management, and now going into things like uh, nutrient or fertilizer management, which, as you may have heard, with fertilizer costs going through the roof in the last year, becomes even more important for our customers. And you, you studied in Vienna. Um, you also studied U University of British Columbia medicinal organic chemistry. You've done, you did biochemistry and nutrition at the University of Ottawa. So you come at this from a chemical background in part. Yeah, I, I, I trained in understanding how do we leverage natural chemicals more effectively? And people with my training would either develop pharmaceutical products, like most of the drugs we use today, are based on natural products. Mm. The same applies in agriculture. We can do a lot by learning more from nature and understanding at the chemical basis what's happening and what's needed really gives us a leg up on, on managing crop risks. We're, uh, we're out of time, Michael, I'm sorry, but can you give us a rough idea of how much capital you've raised so, much, uh, so far, how much financing? Yeah, well, we've been quite fortunate. We've been able to leverage both uh, grant funding and uh, investor funding. So we've raised about $250 million from private investors and about $25 million from the from grants from the government of Canada. Whoa.